band this had just came out and Stacy quit and we were bummed. You know what I mean? Like Stacy was everything. Like he was the one that like understood us, got us, whatever. It's like, you know, who was going to be the one we talked to now? And luckily at that time, it was Lance Mountain. You know, he was actually shooting photos with us and he would invite us to his mini ramp and like, you know what I mean? He made us feel part of like the Bones Brigade. You would think that there would be some like day, like some single line that it's like you rode for Powell and now you ride for Blind, but it wasn't really like that. It's like, you know, Stacy had quit and somehow me and Rudy just started hanging out with Mark Gonzalez. And I think for the next like six months, we were actually staying at Mark Gonzalez's house in Huntington Beach. And I remember just being so blown away by the tricks and the spots that this guy was like doing. I was like, dude, I wanted to stick as close as I can with this person. It was like this Gabriel Rodriguez effect all over. And it's just such another progressive time in my life. Everything was so new that he did. Nothing he did was just normal. And I remember like sometimes like struggling with that. Like, why can't this guy just go skate normal? You know what I mean? Like it had to be a curvy rail or like some like hard bank or like some, you know, massive obstacle. Nothing was official, you know what I mean? But we were already like wearing getaway, riding world boards. Like, you know, we had like been drawn in our grip tape because like we're hanging around Mark. And at one point, like Rudy shows up and he's like, hey, I'm gonna like skate for blind. And I was just like, okay, like I am too. Like we kind of already are, like, you know what I mean? We're already like staying at this dude's house. We skate with them all the time. It's like, let's not fool ourselves. We know what we're doing here. So Mark takes us up to Tony Hawk's house and we were still on Powell at the time. So we get to Tony Hawk's ramp and he's skating and I'm like, do the nose blunt. Oh. What do you want me to do, dude? Nose blunt. I'd already seen him do it on a small vert ramp and it was just, you know, way ahead of its time. And uh, I, he puts his board backwards and he's just doing no-handed blunts. And I think at the time, like, he didn't really want to show Tony Hawk the nose blunt because, you know, he's probably saving it. And, like, Tony's Tony. He's probably going to, like, do a bunch of variations after it. And I remember it was funny in that session, like I try to do this frontside air and like I bail and I think I land on my elbow or something and like, I think I like fractured my rib. I just tried to skate out the day and like play it off like it didn't hurt. But so we have this like great session and uh, I remember at one point Mark and Tony are talking and I remember the demeanor of the session changed and it was kind of like weird. We felt the vibe and I was like, all right, this is weird. You know, Tony seems like, you know, kind of bummed out or something. And when we we're driving home, I remember Mark was telling us that like he told Tony that like he wanted us to ride for blind and that we were going to ride for blind. And I think Tony was bummed, man. And like, I was like super bummed because like Tony is someone I looked up with crazy and I didn't want to offend him in any way. And like, nor was it about Tony or Powell, it was just about like the reality. It's like, you know, Stacy had quit and that had a big effect on us. And now Mark was our Stacy. <laughs> you know, at that time too, you have to realize like Powell was really big and blind was small. So even like certain people in my life were like, you know, like even my mom or something would be like, Powell is your dream team. What are you doing? And it's just like, I, I don't know if you would understand, but I want to go over here with this guy. Like, he's the best. I want to be next to him. Now, like, it's official. We're on blind. The crew is like me, Mark, Jason, Rudy, and Spike. And so Spike Jones, at this point, I have no idea who this guy is or who he is to become. But he's just as, like, young and wild as Mark and Jason. What do you think, Spike? Seriously? <laughs> you think I need to go to the hospital, Spike? I remember the first time that Spike showed up to shoot my first blind at it was like a backside nose grind on the bench and um, it was just such a different working environment than what I was used to with Stacy when we went to do something. It was a big production, you know what I mean? And in this way it was like me and Spike show up to the school and like shoot this picture and we're out and I'm just like, this is comfortable. And it felt like just friends out doing the thing. 
I remember just thinking it was going to be a different feeling working on this project than it would be for working on the Powell project. This was going to be something that was going to be more trick based, I would say, you know what I mean? And focused on the trick and making sure we got the right trick. One of the first like trips I took with Blind, we went up to San Francisco and it was interesting because like the first spot I think we got to was like San Luis Obispo, I think, when Mark like board slides that really long like flat bar. Mm -hmm. And so we get out of the car and like Mark tries a couple of tries and it's like all of a sudden it's like there was Jason out there like he pulls out a camera and he's going to shoot at one angle and Spike was going to do another. It was just so rad that it was like very like hands on and just us doing it. Jason and Mark were unbelievably good and around the time of the blind video there was like all these older pros which were in the same age generation as Mark and Jason. And I mean, they had to have been 21, 22 at the most at the time. And these guys were being pushed out of skateboarding. And what I found with Mark and Jason is that they were two definitely people that were doing some of the best skating of their lives. They were like in their prime. Right towards the end of the blind video, like skateboarding was about to go into a very sloppy area. You know what I mean? I think like one of my last tricks was like a late shove it big spin or something. And it's like, that was right before skateboarding probably got pretty nasty. I remember having a moment with Jason one time where, you know, Jason was good at always joking around and making, making like fun of a situation or just making light of it. You know what I mean? To get a point across. And I remember like, you know, one time I was like doing some tricks and Jason kind of mocked me skating and like making fun of like, you know, how would you like to see something like this or like this? And it was at a point where like, he saw the reaction on my face. Like, you know what I mean? That I was kind of hurt by like what he had done. He was like, oh man, I'm just joking. He had like, very high standards of how he liked to do his stuff. And I think that that was like one of the biggest influences Jason had on me is like showing me, you know, you can do anything you want, but how do you want it to look? That was a super important lesson at a young age when like I was just thinking the only thing that was important was just doing new tricks. I think too, that during that time of the blind video, everything was going really trick based and the blind video had some lines in it and the flow of the video just flowed and it just brought a refreshing view back into skate videos. You know what I mean? Which would be the path that people would take from there into like our, basically our modern day parts that you see today. The funny thing about working on that video is that that was a time in life where like you're so caught up in the experiences that you're having mm -hmm. and the fun that you're having with like Mark Gonzalez and Jason Lee and learning tricks and seeing all this wild stuff that like we weren't really focused on what the impact of that video would be. But when we seen the video, we were super stoked to say the least. For me is like, now that's what a video part is supposed to look like. That's what a song in a part is supposed to feel like. You know what I mean? When you see that jazz with Mark Gonzalez, you're like, yes, makes sense. And really reflected who we were at the time. You know what I mean? So then like, you know, Mark's leaving blind and Jason ends up leaving. And I definitely felt in limbo, you know what I mean? Like with my skating, which way I was going to go, like, you know, where's my influence? Like, you know, now it's all on me. And I think that that was like a transitional period in my skating. And so around that time, I meet Chico and Day One and Eric Costin and Tim Gavin and Henry Sanchez and all these people that are going to be the next generation of skateboarding. I think the next best thing that happened to me as far as inspiration was Henry Sanchez. Henry at the time, he was like full of power. He was full of progression. He had so much fight in him. He was so hungry. And he was, you know, my new Mark Gonzalez. You know, one more try, one more try. Oh! Okay, watch this, dude. I'm making a it was funny because I look back at those times and I think that like I was skating really good. Like I was probably doing great, but the fact that I was just next to Henry all the time, it's just like, you know, you're just average, man. And I think that like everybody like really dealt with that with Henry, you know what I mean? And that was a challenging time in skateboarding for me because everyone was really good. And I was getting to an age where I couldn't be good for my age anymore. I just had to be good. You know what I mean? I was getting a little bit older. And that was around the time that the Tim and Henry video came out. 